Painting individual leaves is a popular first project given by watercolor teachers. Once you know how to paint individual leaves, you can combine leaves for a more complex composition. You can print out both of the templates for this project at rachelarmington.com. Or, if you prefer, you can trace leaves directly onto a piece of watercolor paper. Even using templates, each painting will be unique to the person painting it. I originally wrote about this project several years ago for my childrensart.info website using inexpensive watercolor paper and a kid's watercolor set from a discount store. The project is kid-friendly and the leaves came out well. But for this video, I'll be using cold press watercolor paper and three artist grade watercolors, Antwerp Blue, Permanent Rose, and Aureolin Yellow. If you don't have those particular watercolors or have a different blue, red, and yellow you prefer to use, that's fine. For brushes, I'm using a size one and a size four round. A quick review on color mixing. Yellow plus red, mix orange. Yellow plus blue, mix green. And although it won't be used much in this particular project, red and blue make purple. You'll also need two jars of water, one for rinse water and one for clean water to carry over to your paints. The first step is to paint water within the outlines of the leaves you drew. You want the paper within the lines to glisten if at any point you put too much water down and begins to dome or starts to flow over the lines, dab the excess water with a dry brush or a clean towel. I usually start by dropping yellow onto the wetted paper first. Yellow is in both orange and green, so it will blend well with the other leaf colors. You can help the pigments run into each other by tipping the paper now and then. The red stands out when I first paint it in, but the moist surface of the paper will help it blend with the orange. You can see that the paper is still moist. Because the paper is still moist, I can flick orange into the yellow and it will blend.
At this point, I decide to drop yellow into the orange. I've been working on this one leaf over five minutes at this point. Because the paper was moistened, the paint still blends easily. I want to add the leaf's veins while the surface is still wet. I turn my brush around and draw them in with a handle tip. I use firm pressure, but not so much pressure that it might rip the paper. The tip compresses the paper and darkens the line I've drawn. Squeezing any moisture from my smaller brush, I make highlights by lifting color along the veins. The highlights show up better on darker patches of color than lighter patches. You can make different browns by mixing red, yellow, and blue together in varying amounts. To keep your colors vibrant, try not to let red and green mix together. But if you want your leaves to have brown spots or dark stems, you can mix brown and drop it into the other colors. The red here is flooding too much, so I'm using a dry brush to lift up some of the liquid. Now I can drop green right next to the red and the two colors won't blend.
After the paint is completely dry, you can go in with a smaller brush and darken areas or add detail. One thing you may notice from this project is that as watercolor dries, it lightens and may lose some of its vibrancy. This is called dryback. The more painting you do, the better you'll get at figuring out how to adjust the darkness of your paint. If you feel comfortable painting individual leaves, you may want to go on to the next project. If so, paint one leaf at a time. While one leaf dries, move on to another one that is far enough away that none of the edges touch the edges of the leaf that's drying. If water comes in contact with the leaf that's drying, it will flood into that area and disturb the paint.